for another privilege, another opportunity. We thank you for another chance, Father God, to come to your house of prayer, your house of worship. God, we glorify you for you are worthy. We honor you, Father God, for you deserve all the glory and all the praise. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We pray, Father God, that you continue to make us whole. Bless our lives, Father God, that our lives will be revealed to us through your word, that we will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. So in Jesus' name, we ask you to teach us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. The presence of the Lord. Amen. His presence, His presence, His presence, His presence with us. Yeah. Yes, Lord. 
First John chapter 2 last week we left off with verses 15 through 17 and I left some assignments with you amen or amen amen who wants to begin tonight with talking about our assignment for this week concerning last week any takers in the house somebody said I better get mine over with did anybody say that? Nobody said that. My, my, my. Anybody want to tell us what their assignment was? Name five, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We want five examples of each. Right. We want five examples of each one of these temptations. And we declared that we, and we discovered that, um, if the devil tempts you, he will tempt you in one of these three ways. Last week we were at uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And the author is talking. Who's the author here? John. John. John is talking. The apostle John is talking. And he says, do not love the things of this world. Do not love the things of this world. Because if you love the things of this world, you have no love of God, right? He goes on to say that if anyone loves the world, he loves, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Anybody agree? For all that is in the world is, number one, lust of the flesh. Number two, lust of the eye. Number three, the pride of life. We talked about it last week, the fact that if the devil tempts you, he's going to tempt you in one of these three areas. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life. The pride of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. The pride of life, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh. It doesn't matter which way we see it, it's the same temptations that he, he tempts us in over and over and over again. So who wants to begin tonight talking about the assignment for tonight? Anybody? Okay, lust of the flesh, sexual gratification. Lust of the flesh, sexual gratification. Gluttony, eating too much. Eating too much. Excessive alcohol consumption. Excessive alcohol consumption. Drugs. Lust of the flesh. Okay, anybody else? Who wants to talk about lust of the eyes? Lust of the eyes. Sister Brown is positioning herself to say so. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister Brown. Uh, uh, purchasing unnecessary things just because. Just because you what? Just because you like them. You see it, right? So right. lust of the eye. If you see it, you want it. In my day, they call it hanging out with the Joneses. Whatever the Joneses do and they get, you want. I don't know why they said the Joneses, but I don't know why they didn't say the Browns or the Smiths. So what you see, you want. Anybody else? Lust of the eye. Lust of the eye. Lust of the eye. Keeping up with the latest styles. The latest styles. Because you see it, you want it. People walk walk around looking down people tag and say, who you wearing? I couldn't understand why they would ask who I'm wearing. What does that mean? Somebody help me? Who, who are you wearing? What does that mean? Who made your clothes? Who made your clothes? I can't tell them because you know what? I don't go looking for them. Are you with me? 
If it fits, if it's the right fabric, that's good enough. So when they ask you, who are you, who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? They want to know, uh, you have seen, you have seen something, therefore you want it. It's lust. It's lust. It's lust. It's lust. Lust of that. Anybody else? When we see something, we just fill our houses and our garages with it, right? So we see, we see stuff. We, we see it, we want it. The pride of life. Somebody else talk. What, you, what did you say? Oh, um, the lust of the eye, wanting your family or friends to act and look a certain way. Okay, lust of the eye, you want things to be seen a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the pride of life. What is, what is... The Bible teaches that pride comes before the fall. What what are, what are some of the examples of the pride of life? The pride of life. arrogance. Arrogance, number one. That, that's the top of the list. Arrogance. Arrogance. What did you say? Greed. 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 Okay. Let the flesh. So. Arrogance is the top of the list for pride. Why? Why is arrogance such a, a bold statement when we talk about the pride of life? Because you want to be Most arrogant people think they're better. Okay, they think the thought, the feeling, the atmosphere that they, they, they extend an atmosphere that I'm better than you. Pride. Being above everybody else. Being above everybody else, right? So what, what are some of the examples that we see today of the pride of life? The pride. What, what are some things that's going on in our modern day era that exemplify the pride of life? I have overemphasized academic credentials. Overemphasized academic credentials. Okay? So bringing, bringing attention to your accomplishments when it's not necessary. I tell you over and over again, when God calls you, he won't call you doctor, he won't call you mister or missus, he, he won't call you, he, he won't call you anything that's associated with your degrees. If he calls you servant, then you get a well done. But in order to get a well done, you have to have done well. Are you with me? So many times uh, people want, want pats on the back. We want things that 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 we just gotta have because we're just who we are. We're just who we are. So how do we break this cycle? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. How can we break it? The Bible says, do not love the world because these three things are of the world. So how do we break this cycle? We know it's wrong, right? If we know it's wrong, then do we continue in it? Yeah. Questions, comments? Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't, but you would just continue in, in your mind. You try to get it up, but you think about, like myself, when I first got sick, I was well, well, it took me this. But I just have to think that God woke you up this morning. Go get it. Okay, so, so this pride things can get to a point where it just eat at you, right? It, it can really eat you up. I mean, and guess what? If it's eating you up, it's been eating other folk up. Your pride been eating other folk up years, for years. You know, people have people have smelled you for years. Back home, they would say, he or she is just smelling his herself. She's just smelling herself. He's just smelling himself. I mean, he's gotten to a point where he's so prideful that People can't tell him anything. But all you have to do is just keep watching and keep waiting. The pride comes before the fall. What does that mean? Pride comes before the fall. You going down. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. So, so we have to understand that if we operate in godliness, we won't operate in these three things. Lust of the eye. I just like it because I see it. I just want it because I see it. 
When you look at Genesis chapter 3, you find Eve there. And when you find Eve there, the snake appealed to her in these three forms. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Talk to me about Eve. How, did, how does that play out? How, did, how do we see these three things when Eve is being tempted? Or do we see them? The serpent comes, the serpent comes, and he starts talking to Eve, right? When he starts talking to Eve, he says, you won't surely die. God just knows you will be a God like him. And look at this. This is good for the, the body. This is good to eat. So explain to me, where is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, where is the pride of life? Just in Eve only. Just in her little scenario. This is good for eating. What is that? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. She saw it. It was appealing to her. And it was good for food, good for eating. It appeared to her eyes and her flesh. Anybody else? You won't surely die. What, what temptation is he dealing with? Can't eat. The pride of life. You won't surely die. You're just going to be a god. What is, what is he dealing with? You're going to be a god. What is that? Come on, talk to me. The pride of life, right? So we have, we have. You won't surely die. You can be a god. The pride of life. We are proud, you know. In my years in the chemical plant, they had areas of the plant, and every area of the plant had a foreman, and then they had a, a head operator. And when they say go over to the liquefaction department, over there. He is the God there. And people let these things flow from their mouth. So when you went over there, you say, get out of my area. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with the first thing? He's the God there. He's not God. Okay. Well, his position has he. Other people have labeled him as high. Let's look at Acts chapter 12 for y'all fall out the chair on the hill. I mean, I just can't get, particip I think I'm getting more participation online than I'm getting from y'all tonight. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Let's look at, let's start at verse number 21. <clears throat> start at verse number 20. Who want Brother Miles, will you stand and read that for us, please? Read with your outside voice, if you don't mind. <laughs> Acts 12, 20. Through 24. Is there a 24? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm in the wrong. Acts chapter 12, yes, verses 20 through 24. Acts 12, 20 through 30. We're, remember, we're looking, we're looking where either you consider yourself more than who you are, or others consider you more than who you are. Okay. 12, 20 through 24. Yes, sir. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him. And having made Lastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, <laughs> Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. <laughs> Woo, let me tell you a secret. Just in case you didn't know, God's word is going to keep on going, whether you hear or not. So tell me what went wrong here. First of all, Herod had an attitude, right? He's mad. He's upset. Okay. The, the Bible teaches that, 
that a man who has no control over his own spirit is like a city whose walls are broken down. What does that mean? A man who has no control over his own spirit is like a city whose walls are broken down. What does that mean? What does that say to us? Is that just... Easily defeated. He's, he, he's defenseless because the walls created defense. What else does it mean? He, he, he has no control over his own spirit, right? That means, you know, one of, the, one of the, the, the best things that you can do when you have an opponent, I guess y'all said he knows all about that. One of the best things you can do when you have an opponent is get them all upset. You get them all upset. Once you get your opponent upset, when guys are in the trenches in football, they're just talking noise across the table from each other. I mean, across across the ball from each other. Why are they doing that? Get him focused on getting you back. If he can get you focused on getting you back, he has forgotten blue 45, 58. He's forgotten what the call was made earlier. And guess what? When he forgets why he's there, what he's supposed to be doing while he's there, game over. One who has no control over his own spirit is like a city whose walls are broken down. If you have a, a family in that city, the walls are broken down. They can come in and just tear your family apart. Kill family members. Destroy households. And that's what the devil wants from us. He, he wants us out of control. He wants us to lose our mind. He wants us to go through mental instability. He wants us to mess up so people say, aha, you're not what you said you were. The first problem is you got to stop saying you're anything. Just walk. You don't have to talk. You just live the life. Live the life before. So let's look at Herod here. Herod was upset. That's the first problem he had. When you get upset, Calm down. It's going to be all right. Anybody know when I get upset? Anybody know? Does anybody know when I get upset? Huh? Everybody knows. Everybody knows? Why would everybody know? Okay, well, I've got to ask the question. You're not Is it my counter? Really? What happens when I get upset? Hmm. I have never come in here and thrown a chair. No. No. You don't have to throw a chair. Do I raise my voice? Try well, how do you know I'm upset? I don't raise my voice. I don't throw a chair. What happens? Mm -hmm. Just sarcasm. I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> my sarcasm indicates that when I'm upset. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Do, is that a good thing? No. No? Okay. She picked the night to tell me off. She said, well, you, I just think, I can't wait till it comes up. <laughs> so how do you know when I'm upset? If I'm not still throwing chairs, am I cussing people out? No. No? Well, all these are indications of people in the Do I hit people? Oh, I'm, I'm looking pretty good right now then. How do you know that I'm upset? You might come back and talk to us after you've done something you didn't like or say something. I've, I've noticed that. So that's a problem? No, it's fair. It's, it's fair. Nobody can tell me. I guess y'all never seen me upset. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at God. God is a good God. 18 years almost in it. God has... <laughs> Do I raise my voice if I invite you to the office? No. What? So what about you agreeing with her? Yes. What's your agree? What are you agreeing to? That, yeah, you call you an office, but it's the way you talk. It's, it's your tone. You What's my tone? My tone is elevated. You get low. Oh, I Even know. Even keel. Even just, keel. Just kind of I thought that was a good thing. 
she's looking with a front visitor is looking at us like, what's the problem here? If, if, if he lowers his voice, then what's the problem? Right? And that's what you're saying. So why is that a problem? If I lower my voice, why is that a problem? It's not a problem. Because okay. you're an even tone person. I'm an even tone person. Is that okay? Okay, does anybody know when you are upset? Yeah. What what's, uh, what happens when you get upset? But what, uh, what happens when you get upset? People start moving out the way? No, my, my countenance changes. Your countenance. That's a big word. What does the word countenance mean? Attitude. Your attitude. Attitude. Facial expression. You know, some people can't hide anything they're thinking. And then some people can't hide anything they're thinking because they're going to say it. I mean, I just got to tell them. I mean, they've lost a piece of their mind so many times. So look at Herod. Herod is here. He's upset. But then verse 21 says, so on a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel. He was dressed well in royal apparel. We're talking about the pride of life, right? He's dressed well, and he sat on his throne. He sat on his throne. Another indication of pride is when we either put ourselves on the throne or others put us on the throne. Either way is a bad deal. Now, I'm not talking about a physical throne as he is here. I'm talking about people put you on a level where where you are here and they are here. Is that good or bad? That's bad because sometimes you, can't, you, not, you don't measure up to be up there. Huh? You don't measure up to be up there. Okay, so no man really measured up to be up there. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to get to a point where you understand that none of us measure up to be on the throne. So he, he dresses in royal apparel meaning that he was in an expensive wear and something that people looked up to and people respected. He sat on a throne and he gave a great oration to them. What's an oration? Speech. Great speech. Great oration. He gives a great speech to them. It is a great speech. It is an, a mountain-moving speech. How do we know it's mountain-moving speech? Because what the people say. The Bible says he gave an oration to them. I think it's King James that says it's a great oration. One of the versions says it's a great oration. So he gives this great oration, and what would the people respond? This is the voice of God. This is the voice. And they said it with enthusiasm. How I know they said it with enthusiasm? Because they said it with a shout. And when they said it with a shout, they say, this is the voice of a God. This, this is the voice of a God. If anybody ever called you a God, you say, oh, no, not me. <laughs> push it off. Push it away. You know y'all rebuking all that other stuff in the name of Jesus? Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Because watch what happens to Herod. This is the voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him. What does that mean, struck him? It got his attention. And not only did it get his attention, it defected his lifestyle. It took away his life. Struck him because of what? He did not give God the glory. Oh, you sure did sing today. Well, thank you. I do it like that every time. Boy, you were really on it today. Oh, appreciate it. Great sermon. When somebody, when somebody came to John the Baptist and they tried to give him credit for being somebody great, he said, no, not me. The great one is yet to come. And when the great one comes, I am not worthy even to latch up his shoes. This pride thing can get us in trouble. Let's see if it got, got Herod in trouble. This is the voice of a God, not of a man. So he says, first of all, it's the voice of a God. Then secondly, it's not a man. 
It's, so they emphasize the fact that he's a God. Then immediately, poor Herod, then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he, not the people, because he did not give God the glory or did not give glory to God. Wow. So what, what's your position when someone tells you how, ooh, that's a nice dress, that's a nice suit, that's some, man, those are bad shoes you got on right there. What's your, what's, what's your posture? What posture should you take? What statement should you make? Thank you. What, what does most church folks think of? <laughs> One guy says, I'm just trying. <laughs> Is that the right thing to say? He said, I'm just trying. I'm just trying. Okay. So what, what else can we say or what else can we do other than say thank you? To God be the glory. Now, when we say that, do we really mean that? We, do we say that in the workplace? Or we just say it when we're around church brothers and sisters? Because, you know, church folk know what to say. You know, they know how to say it. They know when to say it. On Sunday, I just watch while I'm standing here. They know when to stand. They know when to wave their hands. They know when to say hallelujah. They know hallelujah. They know when to clap. But when you're real about God, people can tell when you're real about God. And they can tell when you're not just saying to God be the glory or thank God or praise the Lord. Certainly we ought to say, we ought to act it out to God be the glory. We ought to say and we ought to act it out even when, we, when we're not feeling well. Thank God. Praise the Lord. It says that the angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give God the glory. Struck him. Now this word struck is more than just hidden. It. Let's read further. It says it struck him and he was eaten by worms and gave up the ghost, in other words, and died. He died. Boy, wouldn't the world be so much better if people read this and said, this can happen to me. So God, you keep the glory. God is already his glory, right? It already belongs to him. God, you keep the glory. God, you keep the honor. God, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah to your name because you're the great one. Because you are God. The worms ate him. He died. And what the verse 24 says, Brother Miles? But the word of God grew and multiplied. In the midst of your arrogance, in the midst of your death, God's word continues to grow. And it continues to multiply. Sometimes I just look at folk walk in like they like the service ain't gonna go on without them. <laughs> and then it, it's almost like they say, Y'all can get started now. I'm here. That's why at 1030, we're rolling. If the choir's in place or not, we're rolling. If the ushers are in place or not, we're rolling. Simply because the fact of the matter is. We need to understand that God deserves the glory and not us. I was at a church on a, on a, on a resurrection Sunday. You know, on a resurrection Sunday, you get folk in there that haven't been in church a long time, you know. So, so one of the CME Christians walked in, and she was late, and she walked right down the aisle, and the pastor just stopped what he was doing. He said, girl, come on down that aisle with your canary yellow home. <laughs> About 800 people in the house. He said, girl, come on down that aisle, joke and Mary Yellow. And he just stop what he's doing. So if you don't want to take God's glory, don't do things that steal his glory. 
Don't say things. Don't act in a way. Don't wear things that takes God's glory. I said a few days ago, some girls are not saving anything secret for their husband. Because they show it all on the World Wide Web. Everything. There is no suspense in the honeymoon. They show everything. There was a time when a girl got pregnant out of wedlock. Wedlock. The people, the women of the church, would surround her with support, and they would support her and keep her, keep her in her right mind. Now they on Jerry Stringer fighting for it. I mean, they they all in the street fighting. I mean, nine months. Lust of the eye, the pride of life, lust of the flesh. So he, he says to us, whatever you do, don't be like the world. Don't associate with the world because the world is temporal. The world is passing away and the lust in it is leaving us also. But he who has, or he who does the will of God abides forever. Don't get caught up in all of this stuff that appeals to you right now. Because guess what? All of this stuff that appears to so many, that, that so many put their trust in, is fading away. Don't get caught up in it. It's leaving here. I mean, money that people spend on shoes, it's leaving here. Was it Sunday or last Wednesday? I said, you buy what you want with your own money. But if you spend two thousand dollars, you ought to have two hundred somewhere. Two two thousand, two hundred thousand rather somewhere. Are you with me? So don't, don't put your time and your money and your effort into the things of this world. Let's look at verses 18 through 20. Eighteen and nineteen here. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that is the last hour. It is the last hour. It is the last era. It's the last season. And just because John wrote this centuries ago, don't think we are not living in the last day. We've been living in the last days ever since Jesus got up early that third day morning. We are living. Your grandparents used to tell you, you, st you better start living right. We're living in the last days. And they would say, all this stuff that's going on that never happened before, well, they couldn't make it now. Because there's way more going on now than was going on there. And guess what? We are still living in the last days. The stage has been set. The stage has been set for Jesus' return. Nothing else has to happen. He can crack the sky right now. Everything. We're not hearing of wars and rumors of wars. We are in war. And whether we got soldiers on the ground there or not, we're in war. There's a great war going on. It's right around us. It's all about us. There's a war going on. Earthquakes everywhere. Tornadoes everywhere. In divers, different type of places. Places that have, have never had earthquakes before they are there. Mothers against daughters, fathers against sons. Two twin girls just killed their mom because she's dead right. Then they try to stage it. And just they came home and found them that way. A woman who gave birth to them, and they they are twins, so she gave birth, bam, bam, one after the other. She was in pain a long time. Let me share with you. The end time is present. 
we're in the era right now. This is the last hour, John says. He says, this is the last hour. And we know we're in the last hour. He says, little children again. What does, it, what does it mean when he say little children? Come on, y'all. These are, these are young people in Christ. These are the ones who have turned to, to the Lord recently. It is, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist, the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is coming. Anti means against. Christ is Messiah. So what he's saying is, there is going to be one one particular Christ, Antichrist, one opponent of Christ, one opposition to Christ that is going to be revealed. This one opposition to Christ will be revealed. This one person who, is, who opposes Christ will be revealed. But look at what he says. The Antichrist are already here. He says this Antichrist, and we, we know that the Antichrist will, will be in this last hour. He says, but they, many of them, are already here. If, if the Antichrist is one who opposes Christ, then the Antichrist, the many of them also oppose Christ. And we can see them every day all around us. Without the Antichrist, people wouldn't be acting like they're acting now. I mean, there are some people off the chain right now. I mean, there are some people doing some things that you wouldn't think about. Women, women, women are actually microwaving their own children, talking about Satan told them to do it. And they, they, they're turning around once they get to court and said that the Lord wanted a sacrifice. Let me tell you, the ultimate sacrifice has already been given. He died over 2,000 years ago. His name is Jesus. He is the only sacrifice. We're in the last hour, y'all. We're in the last era. It is real. It is right now. Verse 19 says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were with us. What's he talking about here? I know I can get two good answers here. What is he talking about? He says they, they are not with us. They were never with us because they went out from us. And if, if they had been with us, they wouldn't have gone out from us. But they went out from us in order that they would be revealed. The fact would be revealed that they were never with us. So what is he saying here? Is he just writing a poem? Please don't say what I think y'all think. People who spent time in church, but church wasn't in them. Okay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right. People who spent time in church, but the church wasn't in them. That's a good one. And who speak out that there is no... Uh, I don't know if that should be called antichrist, but those who think their church is the only church, I was told that one time. Okay, that's, that's what I wanted to get to that I want to make sure that we understand before we go any further. It's not talking about people that left the New Beginning Church. No, I'm not speaking of that. No, I'm, not, I'm with you now. Let me explain this. It's not talking about people who left the local church. Because what we do as, as Bible readers, we read this and say, see there? They never was with us because they left the New Beginning Church. Let me tell you, there are churches that are spiritual other than the New Beginning Church. There are churches that are adhering to God's word other than the New Beginning Church. There are churches that are about the Lord other than the Baptist Church, other than the Church of God in Christ, other than the Apostolic Church. So he's not talking about the local body, not the local church. 
What he is talking about, those who are committed to the Lord walking away. Doing that day as it is this day, there's a thing called apostasy. Apostasy means to walk away from the Lord, walk away from the church, walk away from the, the body of Christ. And, they, and, and John says that they were able to walk away, and some people walk away very easily. They, they're able to walk away from us because they were never with us. Because had they been with us, they wouldn't have walked away. So that answers a lot of questions for us. When we, we look at a person, we can never tell who's born again. Never tell who's saved. We never tell who's a Christian. Regardless of how they act, we can't tell who, who's a Christian or not. I dare say when we get to heaven, there's some people going to surprise us. We're going to be surprised two times. One, we're going to be surprised of who is there. Two, we're going to be surprised of who's not there. Brother, brother said to me, he says, he said, man, you know, uh, everybody was convinced that this guy was giving a lot of money to the church because every time he stood up, he talked about how much money he put in the church. But when he died, our church finances didn't drop at all and we didn't get any new people in. But the finance team knew <laughs> that he wasn't putting a whole lot of money. When people leave, and John is not talking about leaving the local church. He's talking about leaving God. Remember, the, the pericope is talking about antichrist, people who oppose Christ, people who are against Christ. And then he says, the antichrist is coming. Right now, we just got a swell going on. You know what a swell is? We just got, we just got a swelling going on right now. It's going to get worse. You just got to make sure you're on the right side. It's going to get worse. You, you think it's, it's over with because children are killing their, their own siblings? When, when women are killing their own babies? When men are walking off from good families? And everybody can see it. It's because the devil has their minds. And when the devil gets your mind, he gets your heart, and he gets your very being. The devil, he, he has a way of, of, of getting a person's mind. But let me just say this. If you're born again, if you're saved, if you really love Jesus, the devil can't deal with it. They say, I'm going to voodoo you. I said, okay, let me give you a picture. Because the greater one in me than in all the world. The greater one is in me. And you have to have confidence in that. Because, you know, they were talking about you need to go get a picture and put some voodoo on it. Let me tell you something. We got, we got pictures all over the internet now. They don't even have to ask you for a picture. Are you with me? So the bottom line, what we need to understand is the Antichrist is like the chieftain. And the Antichrist is coming. And right now, all these Antichrists is creating a little swell. But one of these days is going to be a, a big thump. And, and we just we just getting ready. We're just getting ready, right? We get as Christians, we don't have to worry about that. As Christians, we don't have to even be concerned about that. We have to know that we have security, eternal security in Jesus Christ. What does eternity mean? How long? How long is forever? Okay, so if we have eternal security, how do we lose that security? Some people say, well, when you do certain sins, you lose eternal life. Well, why did Jesus lie to us and say we're going to have eternal life? Well, we know Jesus don't lie. Jesus doesn't lie. When we know Jesus doesn't lie, well, there's no way for us to have temporary life once we have eternal life. But Paul says that doesn't give us a reason to sin and keep sinning. 
So he says, he says, if they had been saved, if they had been with us, they would never have left us. If they were on our team. This, not, this is not as simple as just walking away from a local church. There is a day that's coming and it's already here where people walking away from the church anyway. Apostasy. They just leave. They, they don't want to be part of that. And I believe that we could have done a better job in my generation of passing down the desire for church to the previous, to the next generation. I just believe we could have done a better job in making sure that the old tradition of going to church was tied to the next generation. But let me tell you something. Now they got internet, they got a lot of excuses. Oh, I watch you online. I said, you don't ever show up though. <laughs> and I literally go back and look at everybody that showed up. What we have to understand is that we have to pass along the values of godliness to people. We are called to be living sacrifices. Then he says, they left from us, and when they left from us, the reason why they left is because that it would be manifest that they were never with us. Sometimes you don't find out what you didn't have until it's gone. You know, the statement says, you never miss the water till your well run dry. Well, the reverse is true. You didn't know how much peace you could have until that gentleman walked out there. You didn't, you didn't know, you didn't know, you didn't know that it was, it was, I think I got one with this. You, you didn't know that life could be so good until somebody left you. And then you didn't know you could make it on your own. Until you got closer to God. And when you draw near to God, God draws near to you, you, you make it without him or her. You can make it. You can make it. Because we serve a big God. And he does big things. And he does extraordinary things. He does supernatural things. He is God. No man is God. So the next time you see a person that uh, have claimed themselves or somebody else have claimed that they are a God. You just shake your head and walk away. There's no sense in even trying to talk to them about it. They, 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 they're out of here. They, I mean, there are people that, that have come to a conclusion that, that I'm, I'm going to do it my way and Frank Sinatra just fooled everybody. I did it my way. But the problem with Frank is he didn't tell you how it turned out. <laughs> Yeah, you can do it your way. But it has to turn out good for you. And the only way for it to turn out good for you is that you trust Jesus Christ and stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. He's worthy. Just stay with him. In your trouble, stay with him. In, in your good times, stay with him. When you don't understand, stay with him. When you're struggling, stay with him. Just stay with Jesus. Just just walk with him because let me tell you, the Antichrist is, the Antichrist will show you another way and it will look like a good way. It will look like you, you need to just be disrespectful to God. Remember, King Herod, on a set day, stood up and gave a great oration, a great speech, until the people said, this is not the voice of a man, this is the voice of a God. The next verse says, the angel of the Lord struck him because he didn't give God the glory. And he died. The worms ate him. He died. Worms. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. He's no longer with us. Lust of the eye. Lust of the flesh. The pride of life will always get us in trouble. But Jesus died for us over 2,000 years ago. He died so we wouldn't have to give in to the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Not only did he die, he got up. He rose from the dead early that third day morning. He rose from the dead. 
And let me tell you something. Jesus was all the way dead. His heart was no longer beating. Blood was not being spread into every extremity of his body. He was not inhaling and exhaling. He was dead for three days, but the Lord, the Bible teaches that the Lord roused him from the dead. He got up with all power in heaven and earth. So you would have to give in to lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He says live, 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 live your life according to godliness. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. If you want to trust Jesus as your Savior, this is your moment. Come to Jesus just as you are. Just believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, he died on a hill called Calvary. He gave up the ghost. He died for you and for me. If you can believe this story that he died and he rose, you can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. If you want to go to heaven when you die, you want to live a fruitful life on planet Earth, confess Christ as your Savior tonight. And you can do so by joining me in prayer. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. We believe if you pray this prayer, honestly believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and rose from the dead, we believe that you're born again, and when you die, you're going to heaven. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Just inbox us and let us know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to welcome you. If you receive Jesus Christ tonight, please let us know inbox us and let us know so we can rejoice with you and welcome you to the family of faith. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being a part of our service on tonight. In our prayer time, we'll be praying for Sister Joanne Gilworth. We'll be praying for her son, Henry. We'll be praying for Sister Gwen Dorsey, Sister Ava Lane, the Garza family, Ava Frosto, Roxy West. We'll be lifting these before the Lord in prayer. And as we go from day to day, just remember to pray for these great United States of America. Pray for the people of Ukraine. Pray for the Russian leader and the Russians that God will intervene. Pray for our Congress that they will submit to the leadership of Jesus the Christ. Father God, we come now praying for these on our prayer list. We ask you to touch and heal, strengthen and deliver. We ask you to comfort as only you can. Bless us, Father God, as we pray for them that they will be healed, that they will be encouraged that they will be strengthened. That they will look to you, God, for all their strength and for all their hope. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through time, offering and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. For those of you who want to give electronically, you can do so. You can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. And if you want to give by P.O. Box or mail, you can send your, your offering, your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 
Peel Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being a part of our service. We want to thank our visitors for, for being with us. If you want to say hello to us, stand up and tell us your name and, and uh, tell us who invited you. If you're visiting with us, I want you to stand up and tell us your name and, and who invited you. Amen. Um, Sister Lydia Darrington is my sister. She invited me. Amen. Amen. Good to have you. Good to have you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being a part. Um, Sundays, uh, I work for, as a policeman with a Rice University. But on Wednesdays, I'm off, so she told me we have press service. Amen. And I was more than happy to join you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Yes, sir. Good evening, church. Good evening. I don't consider myself a visitor. So I came along with Pastor Davis this evening, and we are just trying to get some things going so that we can further spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Deacon McGill, for, for being here today. Thank you for being a part of our service. All right, will you come now to give your offering to, to bring it before the Lord? I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is with me. Let us look at me. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless his holy name. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Father God, for another privilege to give unto you. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. Now, Lord, we thank you for blessing us tonight. We thank you, Father God, for a way out. We thank you, Father God, that we don't have to give in to the temptation of lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we go. Bless us with safety in our travel. We pray for the choirs. They come to celebrate you come to celebrate who you are and come to celebrate your death, burial, and resurrection. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only true and only living God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. 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 We are uniting the church, strengthening the families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world. As we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the dead, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 13. Thank you so much. God bless you.